if you're Ebenezer, you're crappy. Immediately. Right? No response. I think you're I think you're born with a thousand wrinkles on your face. That's for sure. And way too much hair on your face. Yeah. A singular mole on the nose yeah. with seventeen hairs sprouting and out of it. Yes, so much nose hair. Meow. Welcome to mm. this week's Midwest Pieways podcast. Meow, you're saying? Meow. <laughs> Here tonight we're gonna talk about spring snows. <laughs> we're gonna talk about what we're doing later. Ebenezer. Meow. We're gonna talk about Ebenezer Screw. <laughs> Meow. Meow. Now are we all wearing the same hat? Meow, you're saying? Meow. Mm. Is it a nice outlaw mile high light hat? Meow. Mm. Are we drinking outlaw light? Meow. You yep. sure? Absolutely. <laughs> Purely <laughs> delicious. God. I freaking oh, it's so good, dude. Purely delicious. Purely. But anyway, guys, welcome to this <laughs> podcast. Meow, you're saying? Mm. Meow. Yeah. It's too fun. You can't. You just I need like, a cigar in my nah, mouth as well. Nah, nah, you're you're and piles of money. Where's my Tommy gun? I'm in it's Chicago. Piles nah. of money be fun. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, welcome to the Midwest Flyways podcast. We have Joey Vasallo. We have Cal Ness. We have Canner Deny. What's up? Clark. <laughs> Canner, Clark. Clark, whatever. Ming, whatever yeah. you want to call yeah. him. Which of the names that has been wrong for you so far have you come to resonate with the most? Canner. For sure. Canner. Canner. It's the best. Canner. That is the best yeah. one Tanner, from Casey. Tanner and Connor, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Canner. Canner. How do you spell that? C-A-N-N-E-R. Just that's that's how he spelled it to me in the text. Yep. Holy shit. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> and Groovent. Groovent is great. No, he, what did he say? He said Groont. Gervant. 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 I had Holy no shit. idea who he's talking about. Uh, I know. I told it. I said I'd tell a funny story, and this is the funny story. I used to rep no, please, for this. Please get on I with used, it. I used. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I used to rep for this uh, property management company. Yeah, right. And not rep, but we. So I used what? to work for a company that serviced a bunch of their properties. Okay. And anyway, at the end of the year, I sent this gift card to one of the property managers, and the gift card was in a letter as well. I, mm. I wrote a thank you. Great year. Handwritten. So, yeah. Christmas card. Of course. Okay. She emails me. To email me. To email somebody, you have to type in their name. <coughs> of course. So, you type in Cal at, and she addresses me in the email. Hey, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part was, she was emailing me to let me know. <laughs> that she couldn't, she wouldn't be using the gift card oh. because she doesn't live near that area. So she's going to give it to somebody else in her office. Okay. <clears throat> what? Thanks, Greg. Don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't have to message. You don't have to email me and tell me that <laughs> and address me by the wrong name. It's awesome. And um, her name was Carol. So I commented back and said, Hey, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, and I've been saying this for years, dude. It's no offense to you. It's just who you are. You're very forgettable. That's not true. <laughs> You're that's extremely true. forgettable, and that's okay. Holy shit. And that's okay, man. Yeah. You know, you can't control what you can't control. Dude, I get that. By the way, you guys, big deal. Just went snow goose hunting and actually killed, like, a lot of snow geese. It was a lot of fun. Went with my buddy Jake Whiteman at Whiteman Outdoors, and we killed 80 geese, 80 plus geese in three days. And had a blast and drank a lot of beer. And that video is now on YouTube as of yesterday. Mm. So, you're looking for a good migration spread to go in? Go check out the video. It's freaking awesome. I had so much fun. We're cooking goose vaginas. Yeah, in the dude. Blind. Vaginas in the blind. You can't vaginas beat. in the blind. Come on with it. Yeah. And Paul separated the freaking peppers for me because I hate peppers and how they taste. Little big, bitch. big deal. Yeah, big bitch, actually. Big yeah. deal. So you didn't actually I eat just a don't. I just don't like what I don't like. So you, you know what? And so I'm you, a grown man. Bitch made. And I can say what I don't like for fear of prosecution. I don't have the fear of prosecution. So you can keep trying to drag me down, but you won't. All right, listen here, John. So the big <laughs> thing is going to be... <laughs> it's my middle is name. ...is that it's not <laughs> a fajita no. at that point. Yep. If there's no peppers in it, not a fajita. Yep. It's just a taco. Yep. You remember Austin Powers? A lot of vagina. A lot of vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't like vaginas, bro. So. I don't. They were Paul, good. So Paul fucked up. 
No, he's good. No, you could, no, you could put the onions and the peppers separately, and I picked out the onions and threw it on there. Oh, so you had a taco. Oh, cool. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. <laughs> nice. No, but also, guys, by the way, um, once we get to a 1,000 people that write a review on our podcast here, guess what? We give you a bunch of things. So go and give it a review. I think we're like 200-something away. Go write a review here. I hate that I even have to say this to you guys. Help us help you. Yeah. Let me give you things, right? Right. You know? You want some spinning wing decoys? You want some decoys? You want some camouflage? You want some ammo? You want some Whoa, no. beer? beer? Also, I, don't, I don't know what we're going to give. Also, you know? another great thing you should you should do is if you want to watch these full episodes. Because we're animated. You can subscribe. If you want to see Joey's dumb face. It is dumb. Then you'll want to go subscribe to the Midwest Flyways podcast channel on YouTube. That's where the full episodes are. But Don't I, miss out. But I did convince someone to marry me, so it can't be that dumb, you know? I do a lot, a lot, of, more, dumb, a lot of dumb guys are married. <laughs> I more so trapped her by getting her pregnant. You know, <laughs> <laughs> actually, the other day, this this was actually very funny. Uh, any trades Thanks that are on a job? Let me know. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. It was really bad. All right. Uh, the other day we had we, the other day we had some plumbers on our job site, and you're they, like, "Wow, they look like me." No, <laughs> the opposite actually, which gave me a lot of confidence, um, because they were married, and then when they leave the job site, they are allergic to cleaning. You know, mm. they don't know how to clean. Mm. They don't know how to sweep or clean or like do anything. Electricians and plumbers. And it's funny because it's almost like people think when they're on a job site, that it just doesn't have to get cleaned. But it does. It does have to get cleaned. Someone has to clean it. So Otherwise, Cal has to clean it. I have to clean it because <laughs> we're the GC, so we clean it. And every time they leave, I just think, can you imagine being married to one of these motherfuckers? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. This guy literally went to his apprentice, and he was like, hey, so you swept up down there? Yeah. Really good? Yeah. I go down there? Uh literally pipes pieces of pipe all over all over the fucking ground wood shavings everywhere they drill through anything they want they don't care pull down all the poly on the ceiling whatever doesn't matter <laughs> and i just thought to myself in that moment holy shit dude these guys these guys are married bro imagine or, or they're not they are <laughs> or they're not they are dude it's crazy dude what if they're just odd unhappy marriages out there <laughs> <laughs> Right here. You're going to be fine, Carter. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Can't, can't hurt. My bad. Clark. Uh, um, tell me about this duck hunters from Minnesota going to Arkansas. Apparently, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the full story, but apparently five or six duck hunters went down to Arkansas. From Minnesota. From Minnesota. And they went to a refuge, boated in, illegal, with a surface drive. Illegal. Nice. nice. They set up spinning wing decoys, illegal. illegal, and then they brought several cases of ammo, illegal. You can only bring 25 a person, and the game warden and a bunch of locals were watching him, <laughs> and they get done, and they get checked, and they get the max fine, and he goes, hey, man, here's your ticket. You should just not come back. You should just go home, <laughs> you know? And, it, and I was talking to a buddy about this today, and I'm like, what is it with Minnesota hunters what? where they we are just constantly getting a bad name, right? You go to North Dakota, South Dakota, even Wisconsin. You go all over the place, and they look at your license plate, and they say, oh, you're a blue plater? No. No, you cannot hunt my spot. What happened to, we're Minnesota nice, right? Mm -hmm. What happened to Minnesota, I know how to hunt, and keep getting permission. Yeah. You know, we need to step it up big time here in Minnesota. It's bad. Now, a lot of plumbers. Am I, <laughs> <laughs> am I the best? Have I been the best in my past life? No. Am I actively working on it and putting in the extra effort? Yes. But God. I think all Minnesotans, Minnesotans, Minnesotans need to work on this guys. Cause our name is bad in multiple States. Whenever it's we go bad. and travel and hunt, it's getting bad. 
I get so much shit for being from Minnesota. And it's like, damn, dude. The amount of times I've been turned down permission driving into a North Dakota driveway, and he goes, where are you from? I go, Minnesota, and he goes, no. Yeah, or just having the guy, you ever had the dude where they don't they don't even ask where you're from? They just lean over to look to look at your truck? Yeah. They just lean to look at your license plate? Dude, it's gotten so bad to where in the Dakotas or wherever I go now, I'm just, like, self-conscious. And when I pull up into someone's driveway, I turn my truck yeah. at a 45-degree angle so they can't see my license plate, so they have to talk to me and feel me for my personality and who I am. Versus where I'm from. Yep. That's a problem. That's insane. That's a that's actually a problem if you think about it. Insane. It's not cool, man. No. So I think here I am on my freaking soapbox again telling right, people right. what they should or shouldn't do. <clears throat> Sorry about this, guys. But I think this is a problem with Minnesotans. It's me included, you know. But we need to be better at being good stewards of other people's lands, picking up our shells, picking up our garbage, not shooting over cattle. You know, not trashing the field, leaving ruts, like treat everybody else's land like your own. And then I think our name as blue platers will be better. Do you think this has anything to do with the fact that we do have a lot of duck hunters in Minnesota, but it's not like it's not a religion here. You know how like down south, these kids grow up, they grew a lot of dudes down south grow up hunting and it's kind of a part of their culture. I will never forget when we got off the plane in Louisiana and when you're leaving the Monroe airport, there's duck decoys in the middle of the airport pond, right? Yeah. And I just, that moment, I was like, holy shit. Like, that was, that was just a great realization because I think that was my, like, one of my, that might have been my first trip, like, to the South South to hunt. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's a religion, you know? It's not, like... Around here, man, if unless you grew up in a situation like you did, where you kind of grew up in a family that was really serious about hunting, unless you grow up like that, there's a lot of dudes in Minnesota that are kind of fair weather hunters. We have 80,000 duck stamps sold last year, so we, we have a lot of people in Minnesota that hunt waterfowl. But I don't think that there's a lot of kids that grow up in Minnesota whose dads are really serious about waterfowl. I think you know, or their families. Like, they're not brought up in a situation where they kind of learn a lot of the ins and outs. And I think there's a lot of uneducated dads and family members that go out a couple times a year and bring their kids, and then their kids want to go on a hunt somewhere else, and they just, maybe they don't actually know a lot of the etiquette or just, like, the right thing to do. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know what it is, Cal, but um, I was talking to my friend about this earlier today, too, where it's, like, where I go to pick up, Milk, uh, they had a bunch of geese on their pasture pond. The first time I went and picked up milk there. And uh, I was like, hey, would you let me goose hunt there? She's like, no. Uh, A bunch of high schoolers came here a couple years ago, and they spooked the cattle, and they ran through the fence. And um, they almost hit a car driving past on the road because it's close to the road. And they left their shells everywhere, and it was just like a bad, bad deal. And I was like, well, you had the wrong people hunting there. You know, you have to, like, judge the people. And if they're if they're really young and in high school, and if, let's just say, their parents didn't teach them and they're just going off of social media or whatever, um, totally makes sense where it's like, no, we need to pile them up. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if there's a car driving by or whatever. Like, maybe they were raised in such a way where garbage is garbage, whatever, we're on a farm. Who cares? You know, I don't know. Yeah, you know? I, I don't know either. <laughs> But then she called me two days after the fact because she has a lot of pigeons there too. She's like, please kill all of these things. And I made a made a point to go through and pick up all my shells and whatever. And then I had conversation with her for at least a half hour. You know, she's a chatterbox and uh, lovely human being. And it's just like, hey, I won't spook your cattle, whatever. Like, I'm not going to shoot directly over your cows even though they're fine, you know. They're not going to freak out and run through a barbed wire fence. but um, And now I have a great relationship with her, and she's going to let me goose hunt next fall and whatever. Like, I, I love talking to her. I have to, like, plan out my day <laughs> and be so like— you have enough time? I have enough time to, like, hang out with her, you know? Yeah. And so I just feel like— Does Aziza go with you? She went with me one time, yeah. She lost her mind. Yeah. Yeah. Love the goats the and farm. the cows. and Oh, my God. She lost her mind. <laughs> Carl! Yeah, she woke up at uh, 2 a.m. the other day. 
she she called for this baby goat, and the baby goat's name was Carl. And she's like, Carl, Carl. The lady did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> and the, the goat comes screaming, meh, meh, and just comes right up to Aziza, almost knocks her over, and just licks her face. Yeah. And Aziza was just freaking out. And then the other night, she woke up at the witching hour, and uh, she just sits straight up in bed. I saw it on the monitor. She was like, me, 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 me. And then just sits up, Carl, Carl. Oh, just, starts, just starts screaming the goat's name. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, but, no, I just, I, I'm sick of the stigma of Minnesota hunters just because it affects me wherever I go. You know, it's just like, let's try to be better. You know, I'm I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing my part. You know, I just feel like if everyone really put in the extra effort to pick up your shells, pick up your wads, don't leave ruts in the field, like treat it as if it's your property. Yeah. And I think we're going to be a lot better off. Because how many times have you gone to a public hunting spot and there's just garbage everywhere? everywhere. Shells everywhere. Dude, I think that it's, it's kind of crazy actually because the reality of it is if someone's letting you hunt, especially if they're giving you permission and you're not paying for a lease there, why would you ever think that you would leave it in shitty condition? Like you 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 don't own this land and you're hunting there for free. How much fun are you having hunting on these people's property? It's like the easiest thing to do is to not rut the field and not leave your shells and garbage there. Well, it's not just hunting. It's like ice fishing too. Really? It's so bad. Really? On those lakes where those big ice houses are, it's garbage everywhere. Yeah. What kind of garbage? Just like they leave their garbage behind. Like a like a garbage bag or just like strewn garbage? Like beer cans everywhere, strewn garbage. Like even their, like the houses that have like shitters in them, they just leave it on the ice. Like they just leave everything out there. Like there's poop on the ice? Yeah. They just what? dump it out there. Yeah. The Minnesota DNR, I think it was this last year, made a new law where they can't do that anymore. Like, it's illegal to dump your shit on the ice now. Wow. Wow, dude. It was so bad. Yeah. It's, like, really bad. I know. I like do on, know. Like, on Red and Leech and... Uh, every yeah. Lake. I do know that, like, when they have... What's the... What's the big... um Where they have, like, kind of the ice town? It was Eel... How, Eel, Eel Pout Festival. The, Eel Pout Festival is fucked. They stopped doing it because of that. Yeah. I mean, it's... Are you serious? I'm it's, pretty sure that was why. I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. Because I read a whole report and they had pictures, Joey. Tons. Like, tons bud. of garbage. Yes. Like, it's... They, they... In the post, they had said that after Eel Pout Festival, it takes like 100 volunteers like a week to clean the area where ice houses were. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And especially if it's like freezing and thawing, like that little temperature change, yeah. it'll get frozen into the ice. Yeah. yeah. It's bad. It's insane, dude. It's very bad. So it's not just hunters. It's people. People from Minnesota are really nice, but really dirty. Yep. <laughs> and it's again, crazy. Not to sound like I'm on my soapbox or anything, but like we all love the outdoors. Yeah, We all want to use the resource, but you also have to respect the resource and especially other people's property. If it's private or if it's private, I feel like you should go the extra mile. And I think where I went wrong when I was younger is I wanted to hunt as long as I could. And so it'd be like a timing issue where it's like, uh, I'm not going to go out there and pick up my wads. You know, I'm not going to go out there and like, I know that there's shells here. I saw the ones that are visible, but I'm not going to actually like pick through the grass. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like if you're using someone else's property and someone else's resource, like especially public land, man. Right. It's like just plan ahead and like take the time to like make it better for everyone else too. Yeah. I think it's a lot of young guys or you think it's all, know, all I, ages. It might be like the entitlement thing where it's like, well, our tax dollars pay for this or I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I truly don't get it. I mean, if I, if I see it, I definitely pick it up. So, yeah. And like I said, in a previous podcast where, um, I have such a good relationship with so many farmers that I hunt with that I take it extra serious. And like, I don't want to have a bad relationship because it's happened before where I've lost permission on areas because I was young and dumb and, whatever, something that I thought was okay, and they're like, how dare you? And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. 
You yeah. know, I, I feel terrible about it. And so now, especially now as I get older, I'm like, damn, I really don't want to piss anybody off. I don't want to ruin this for anybody else. And then also I don't want to like trash the resource. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> like, but it took me, I'm, I'm hard headed. And so it, it definitely took a couple of times of me losing permission and, um, someone calling me out on it, you know, where it's like, oh, you're right. That isn't biodegradable. What am I thinking? What's wrong with me? You know? So maybe people think everything's biodegradable. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. You know? It's pretty crazy <laughs> that you can go to a place and literally just have them look at your license plate and you're automatically, like, in trouble. This podcast is brought to you by Sound Gear, by the way. And Sound Gear is absolutely the best hearing protection you can buy on the market. They have the most money, I think, not even close, spent on research and development. And it's a game changer, guys. It really is. It makes hunting a lot easier in the sense that you don't have to think about every time your neighbor pulls the trigger there's no you know squinting your eyes or and dude don't no matter who you are i've i've hunted with dudes and it's so funny when you hunt with a dude and you're wearing hearing protection you're like no i don't wear that shit you're like buddy i don't care what you say but every time i pull my trigger today and your ears ring you're gonna remember why i said this you won't you won't have any choice, but I know your ears are ringing because the minute that I have these things out and Joey rips off a couple shots, it's painful. It's like, holy shit, how? How did yeah. I do this for so long? Hey, guys, we have a discount code here on the screen. It's a phone number you can call. Otherwise, we have a discount code, MWF125, for the InstaFits as well. We use the Phantoms. They're $1,600 retail, but with our discount, you get 200 bucks off. And so go check it out on their website. You will not be disappointed. Trust me on that. And you can also use the code FLYWAYS, which is the updated one. They both work. They both work. They both work. Okay. Love it. How dare you? Anyway, Carter, what are we doing next? Are we doing great debate? Yeah. Okay. Holy shit. What are our talking points here? And (laughs) and why don't you explain it for everybody? Yeah. So great debate. I give Cal and Joey a topic. And no matter if they agree or don't agree, one of them has to pick a side. Cal's picking his side today. So he picks which side he wants to debate towards. Joey has to pick the other side, even if he doesn't agree. And today's topic is belly up versus belly down pile pictures. (laughs) So, Cal, which side are you picking? (sighs) I'll do belly up. (laughs) (laughs) Are you sure, bud? (laughs) Why don't you tell me... (laughs) You want me to start? The, you want me to start this debate? <laughs> why don't you tell me why you're going belly up? You need a little time. Why don't you tell me Definitely. why you're going belly up? All right. So look, 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 Barry. Here's the deal. My name's Barry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to take a good pile picture, what's the number one thing you know about fields? They're dark typically. Sometimes they're golden. Sometimes. They have a little color to them. But a lot of the time, especially in Minnesota, they chisel plow these fuckers faster than you can even, you know, (laughs) ask them not to. So if you put your birds belly down, what happens is the bird just blends into the ground. So there's nothing uglier than not being able to even physically count how many birds they shot because it's just one blur of gray and black. You know, so when you look at somebody's pile pick and you think, wow, they must have had a really good day. Sometimes when people post them and they're belly down, I think, I don't even know if that's a lot of birds. It just looks like a big, just looks like more field. So if you want the bird to even be slightly visible at all, if you want that contrast of the white on the belly, you obviously want to put these birds belly up. That would be my number one argument. Do you have a rebuttal for that? You'd like to? Oh, 100%. Okay, I'd like. <laughs> Here's the deal, this. man. Birds were created as God made them, <laughs> right? <laughs> and how does God look down on his creation? He looks <laughs> down on them. And when they are flying or in a standing position, you are looking at their backs. <laughs> not okay? Really. Not really. If they're standing, you're looking at them. No, 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 no. If you're looking from above, you're looking at their backs you're at all at, times. Oh, this is where you're headed with this. This is At all times. <laughs> you're going wild. And so if God, 
if it's okay for God to look down on them, it's okay for us to look down on them as well. <laughs> and here's the deal. We don't kill waterfowl for a perfect pile pick, do we? No. We kill it for our enjoyment, for the sport, for the meat, and then also to help cull the population so that they don't die a horrible death of disease. So it doesn't matter to me whether it's belly up or belly down. However, if it's belly down, I can think of many, many species that they look better belly down than they do belly up. Great. So you know my follow-up to that is going to be which ones? Mainly divers. Why? Because that's where all their color is. Sure, that's not true. The speculum of the wings. Right. Right, so the thing is that that's not true because when you do them belly down, you're having the contrast no matter what. So if you think about a lot of the prettiest divers that you know, you're still getting the contrast. You're still getting a lot of the contrast of the belly being a, a lighter color. Almost almost every waterfowl species has a lighter belly. So if you're looking for contrast, which you are, and the other thing is the point you brought up about looking down on them and... <laughs> You know, when you're taking a pile pick, you know, you're you're either A, relating yourself to you think you should look down like God, which... No. Careful. <laughs> no. And then... It's blasphemous. And then <laughs> the other thing is, for a guy like you, then your argument really is that you don't want people to take pictures at all. Well, let me just put it to you this way. All right? Sure. What's the prettiest looking thing on a duck? Depends on the duck. Right. But a lot let's of the time, say, let's, head. Say, let's say we have a bunch. A lot of time, the head. Sure. Which you would sure. see really good belly can down. You, can you see the head Not belly up and belly down? Yeah, but a lot of the time, the contrast on the head is on their neck area and their throat. You know? And so then if you put them belly down, you wouldn't see any of that anyway. So let's let's pick a duck. Okay. Right? Sure. You got a mallard. Okay. Mallard. Is there a contrast between the head and the back of the neck and the front of the neck? Yes. Yes, there is. Right. What's the mallard's What's belly? What's the contrast? We have green to white ring uh-huh. to gray. Yeah. Right? And on the front, on the chest of it, we have green to white to chestnut that, brown. Right? Mm, that beautiful chestnut brown with a little to bit white. Of, to fading into white. <laughs> Just beautiful. So you have more, co- so you would go, no, the if big we're thing talking, would be. If, we, if we're strictly on contrast. I feel like there's more contrast on the back. That's not than true there at all. The there's no white on the back, except for there's on the a, wing. There's a little bit of white. No. Right on the neck. No. Just, right on the yeah, neck. and it's also on the front. And then you also get the brown, which you don't get on the <laughs> is back. Is there not a big contrast Let's between do, green and gray? I think that that would be, this is a pretty self-explanatory argument, because you don't green get the gray? brown. You don't get the beautiful brown. So it goes green, white. It's preference. Beautiful rust brown preference into a nice white. You got a lot of beautiful contrast, all the colors. On the back, no brown. It just goes from green to white, and then it kind of becomes Let me ask a grayish, this. darkish color. Let me ask you this. Who who killed more birds in the day? People nowadays or people back in the day? So what we have nowadays is something called a limit. And so what they <laughs> didn't have back in the day is a limit. So would you... So, so we're talking about Teddy so Roosevelt? So let, me, so let me get to my point here. Sure. Would you say that we know how to kill and eat birds better back than they did back in the day. Uh I no not I wouldn't know how we would know that necessarily. But no. A lot of pictures. I can't. A lot think, of pictures. I think that we're able to kill birds better now. Do you think so? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, because you can't throw piles of corn anymore and you can't have live ducks that you use as decoys and you can't shoot a hundred a day. And no, my my point is that they were a lot better at killing birds than we are now. I don't. They I don't, put up substantial, substantially more numbers than we did. No limits, and and right. they had live birds as decoys, right? And they had punt guns, right? And so they weren't better at killing ducks. They just had less restrictions on how now, to kill ducks. So that would actually make question. an argument for the fact that we are better at killing ducks now because <laughs> there's limits and you can't use real ducks as decoys. And um, they were you know, better at there's it. There's no punt guns. They were now. better yeah, at it. A, a two they were more effective. They were way more effective. <laughs> yeah, more effective. 
Um, now they also had a lot more birds to play actually, with. Actually, not effect, not more effective necessarily. They just had they just had the chance to kill more birds. Please, Dude, are you telling me that you please tell are you telling me. me that you really think you really think them guys wearing no camo, red, red? I've seen a lot of guys wearing like red plaid, green, whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, plaid red, a lot of whatever. tin cloth clothes. Yeah, you know? not not hiding very well. You ever seen the pictures of their hides, mm-hmm. quote unquote? Mm-hmm. So just kind of sitting out in the open and using a punt gun. And, and did they kill duck. more birds than we do now? Yeah. Yeah, because no limits. So you know those days when you go out on those hunts and there's like a ton of birds and it's just a great day, but then you have to stop at six. They didn't. So they didn't stop at six. So they just kept shooting right. until the day was done, until they were sick of it. In so, their let red me, plat. so let me get to my next point. Okay. Looking back, especially at the market gunner, uh-huh. how did they take their pictures of birds? Well, here's the thing. When That's you, not when what you, I asked. <laughs> what I asked was, how did they take their pictures with birds? Totally. And here's the crazy thing. That's they, not they, an answer. <laughs> a lot of the time, they hung them. That's what I thought. Okay? They hung birds up. And that's a great way to see how many birds you shot. And the reason that they didn't have to put them belly up is because when you shoot 300, then there's not then no one really cares. They're not like... Wow, that's a great day. It's just you're like either a savage motherfucker who shot 300 ducks today because there was no stopping you and you had a pile of corn the size of a semi truck in a field. <laughs> you had a punt gun. So if like 50 ducks come it's in, it's a bad argument. Dude. Of them. It's not a bad argument at all, dude. Imagine if we had all the stuff that they had no limits, no restrictions, punt guns, live ducks, and a pile of corn in the field. You're really telling me you think we wouldn't shoot more birds? Imagine a pile pick, yes. bellies up. Yes. Of 300 Canada geese <coughs> or like yes, 300 think, mallards. Yes, Cal. I think. If we had all of those things and no, res- like, zero restrictions, yeah. we still wouldn't even get close to the amount of birds that they kill. No, that's not true. 100%. Less ducks. Because we have less ducks way now. less ducks than they did back then. Damn, so that makes us and even now, better hunters now. No. Yes, no, it does. We don't even touch their numbers. No. So let me just tell you this. How they hung and laid their birds out in fields, because I've read the book many times. Yeah. And I've looked at the pictures many times. Uh-huh. Majority of those pictures were belly down and backs out. Gross. They look terrible. Pics look awful in those photos. So you, what you're saying is we do it better than they did. We take better pics. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> but they were working with what they had. No, they and the had pictures they had are bellies. still. They could have gone so belly up. Sick. Those pictures are still so sick. Yeah, I remember black this... and white, and you're like, whoa, remember that? Wow, look at that, dude. <laughs> Three thousand <laughs> ducks they shot that day. Probably the craziest freaking picture out of the entire book, right? is a train from Minneapolis going to Minot, North Dakota. And they stopped the train several times because many of the passengers had shotguns and there were so many birds in the fields right next to the train tracks that they were shooting birds as they were going along in the train. You're and they making stopped, my argument. And they stopped the train several times so they could pick up 600 plus birds and then they nailed them they put nails into the train car and put the beaks up like their bellies up against the train car hanging back still an absolute epic photo no bellies out and so it's not epic because of the birds hanging with their backs out it's epic because they stopped a train to shoot 600 birds in a field all i'm saying is how are you going to make that you're not going to make that photo better by having the bellies out. You're not going to make that photo ever again is the point. The point the is deal. you're never, and you are. You would make it bellies out. It would be better bellies out because on that black and white photo with that white contrast in there, those photos would have been way more epic. It would have looked like way more birds. It would have looked naughty. Here's the deal, and guys. We're going to put this up on our Instagram in a poll. Who won, me or Cal? Yeah. And it's there's it's not even a discussion because everything you did You're right. was turn it's the argument. It's not a discussion. You turn the argument into <clears throat> literally just you saying, "Wouldn't it be cool if we could <laughs> shoot six hundred birds in a train?" So yes, that would be sick, bro. Is like, that what I said? You look at those old photos; almost all of them are belly down, and they look like shit. And they're fucking sick. They're cool because they're from eighteen eighty nine. They're not cool because they had nope. bellies down. It's sick. It's not sick. Okay, it's let's sick, take all dude. of our pics this year. Bellies down. Sounds good. No. <laughs> no. Obviously not. Obviously, you're we wrong. We got to pick right there, dude. And belly down. A couple of them are belly up. 
Yeah, it looks like shit. And that gadwall <laughs> looks fucking sick. And that gadwall is mounted in the cabin. We're gonna take all our picks belly down this year. No. Hashtag hashtag belly down. Hashtag belly down. Belly down beat down. Yeah. B B B down beat down. B B um, D B. Yeah, we'll do pouty no, pile pick. B D B D. We'll do pouty pile pick belly down. <laughs> I'll be pouting because we're belly down. This was a really hard one for me. So yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Yeah, because it's you just. <laughs> but honestly, you did a great job of morphing it into a conversation about old pictures. <laughs> because I didn't I'm know where you'd debater. go. I because that was a great debater, dude. Yeah, it, it was. They, it, it was your best chance. Yeah, it was. I mean, you got. Fucked, you can't do it better than back than they did back in the day. So let's <laughs> rewind that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it better than what they did back in the day. Right, because we'll never have no limits and belly punt down. guns and piles of corn and live ducks. No, 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 that's not true. Again. Because belly down. That's not why. <laughs> that's definitely not why. <laughs> Write that down. Belly down, beat down. Imagine in your head all those old-timey pictures if it was a bunch of white bellies in there. You Hashtag think, BD, BD. Shit, they really did it. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Please, let's get off of this. <laughs> wow. That I gave you a run for your money, dude. Yeah, not a run for my money, but you you did a great job with what you had. That was a tough one. Yeah, I mean, that was the topic because I joked about it with Paul, and he said I should take your camera away, and you're not allowed <laughs> to be a photographer. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. great debate topic. Yeah, for one side, beautiful. It's unbelievable. That was the great debate brought to you by Onyx Hunt, and Joey's going to tell us his favorite new feature of Onyx Hunt this year. Honestly, man, there's no new features that I'm pumped about. Do you hate them all? No, I, it's not that I hate them. It's just, honestly, one of the coolest things about Onyx is I'm trying to buy a house right now, slash a farm, and people say it's 16.6 acres, right? And then I go on Onyx, and I find out it's 15.8. And I go, hmm. And then I talk to the realtor, and they go, oh, yeah, I guess the plot lines are a little wrong. And I show them the Onyx map, and they go, yeah, that looks right. Yeah, it's actually 15.8 versus 16.6. And then I get pissed, you know, because you're selling me a lie. A lie. So Onyx, thank you for helping me check real estate options, not only for hunting and getting permission and see who owns what and where the property lines are, but if I'm trying to buy a property and you're wrong, Onyx is right. Huge, dude. I think what you just said, the point you made was that it gives you great indication of where plot lines are. It's huge. Plat map. Online plat, plat, map, plat map. Online plat map. Huge. Hashtag and then, and then now map. they tell you uh, what agriculture is grown there. We've talked about it so many times. So many times. It, huge. Going out of state and trying to find out where you're going to hunt in an area you've never hunted there before. Find where the corn is. Find where the water is. You're going to kill birds. Recent imagery in state. Pretty is it corn deal. in that field it was last year? Do I don't we know. have a discount code? or We do. MWF20. 20% off on X memberships. Huge. Use that. Love that. Huge. And they Thanks. just came out with new apps about like uh, biking ATV trails and then also a uh, fishing app. Fishing app. Is that out? I thought the fishing <laughs> app was out. Is it not out? I checked last week and it wasn't out. Okay. Well, well Cal did a podcast with Ben Bredigan while I was gone because he's a bastard yep. and I love talking to Ben. You did go south to go to Snow Goose Hunting this past weekend without me. But you're having a child, dude. I know. I'm just saying that week you were busy. It wasn't like I just like you know excluded you on purpose. We didn't schedule it. You did, um, well, maybe. But anyway, yeah. yeah. On to our next segment here. Yeah. Um, the draft. Yep. What is the draft on this week, Carter? This was Cal's topic. You can bring it up. Okay. Because I don't remember what it All is. All right. So this week we're gonna draft, and Carter will be participating. We pay Carter, by the way, and he doesn't remember <laughs> that. Right. You don't pay me to remember. It's kind of a big problem. So. Uh, we're going to do post-hunt celebrations. Mm. Post-hunt ritual. Okay? Best post-hunt so rituals. Your best post-hunt rituals. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Carter start. <clears throat> Since he was so excited to participate he in the wasn't. draft. No, he was. He had a full list of stuff. He's he been training for this. Big trainer. Yep. Big trainer Yep, guy. yep, yep. Okay, Carter, so be, because I'm concerned you're not going to do well at this, we'll let you go 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this is a completely original idea. Okay. Um, my favorite post on celebration is after a great, great field mallard hunt on a Sunday afternoon in the fall. Okay, hold on really quick. Yep. <clears throat> Make sure you're drafting one thing that you love. You yep. know, you can't, don't like lay out your whole day because then you'll be fucked for the next three things. Okay. Watching 
NFL S- Sunday night football after hunt. So an afternoon hunt, then Sunday night football. Sunday night football, yep. Okay. You know what's incredible is he goes, I don't know <laughs> any after hunt rituals because I don't know. And I said, you know what? Plebs do this. Plebs. <laughs> and Carter... Word for word, <laughs> recited w- an example that I gave him. Nope, original. You're saying <laughs> nope, original. Ir- 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 original. I am upset right now. <laughs> pleb, absolute <laughs> pleb. Cal, give us some originality, please. All right, dude. Best post hunt ritual. Pleb. <laughs> Best post hunt ritual is breakfast with the boys. Mm. Love doing breakfast with the boys. A little cinnamon, a uh, little bit of cinnamon toast. A little bit of French toast. A little bit of this. Cinnamon little bit of French that. toast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Breakfast Breakfast with everybody after the hunt is awesome. That's my one one. That's a really good feeling. It is. Um, here's, here's my favorite, right? Let's just say you go out at 8 a.m. Let's just, I'm Uh-oh. sorry. I, I messed set a lot of it up. I messed up. <coughs> Let's say you go out, you know it's going to be a banger, right? Yeah. And you get done so quick. And you're just like, what are we going to do with the rest of our day? Because mm-hmm. you told your wives, your girlfriends, whatever. You like, oh, I like, you like, you normally just like set up, like, we're going to be hunting, you know, it's Saturday morning, Sunday morning, yeah. whatever it is. And you go out there and you just bang out a six man limit. Yeah. And you're like, damn. Dude. It's like 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. It's 8 30. And you're like, breakfast you're just cruising. Boys. You're going breakfast with the boys. Yeah. You stole one of mine. Okay. That was one of mine. Going out to Peg's Countryside Diner oh, yeah. in Hamill, Minnesota. You go there, you just crush some unbelievable French toast. <laughs> it's right? good French toast. And then you're like, damn, guys, we killed it this morning. We should clean our birds. Cool. You're all cleaning your birds. Crack a beer at like 9.15, <sighs> in the morning. You got blood on your hands. You're cracking a beer. There is nothing better, and you're just bullshitting about the hunt. Oh, you missed that shot. Oh, you missed that shot. Dude, nothing beats that. It's yeah. so good. Yep. That That's beer tastes so good at 9 in the post morning. On, post on Outlaw was on my list. Beer. Post Law. Post, post, post Law. Post Law Light. Post Law Light. It tastes so good, dude. I yeah. love that. Cleaning birds, drinking beer. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. Can't beat it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Post hunt beer, incredible. Carter. Yep. Mine you're going to go ahead and go, t- yes, draft yep. your second. Yep. Mine is kind of along the same lines as Joey. Uh-oh. But we do, we Original. did a lot of afternoon hunts. So mine is after the hunt, it's a great hunt, you go clean the birds and make them with them, with the people you hunted with. Make the birds like on the grill, duck poppers, just chill out after an afternoon hunt. Mm. That's fun. That is fun. I like that. That's a good one. That is good shit. Not really original, but again, <laughs> good one. <laughs> <laughs> Carter's an NPC. Yep. I like to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Carter's an NPC. Canner. Thank you for calling me Canner. I am Canner. I am Canner. Welcome to my store. <laughs> <laughs> it's grandma's boy. <laughs> 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 But unbelievable. All right, I'll draft. It's so uh, unbelievable, dude. <laughs> it is, bro. <laughs> All right. Um, another another one of my favorite post hunt rituals is watching golf, i.e., taking a nap. Yeah, sports I mean, and nap. Yeah, if like watching golf is taking a nap, so if you get home from a great hunt, you can just sit down and watch golf that was always matt's dad's way of saying he was going to take a nap so if you'd be like what are you going to do today be like i'm gonna watch some golf and that just meant he's going to take a nap all day (laughs) so (laughs) you know what man if you're really tired you had to get up super early and there's nothing better than finishing up and just knowing you had an awesome hunt it's so easy to take a great nap it is it really is yeah yeah i took a fat nap in south dakota yeah, so you did. good. Yeah, yeah you did. in all my hunting clothes, still just. Yeah, you took a fat nap in Idaho. And we weren't even done with the hunt yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough. That was a rough day. That melatonin, dude. Uh, I think it doesn't doesn't kick in until <laughs> the next day. The outlaws <laughs> that kicked in. Unreal. Yeah. 
All right, uh, Joey. A new tradition for me uh, since having kids, um, naturally as a duck hunter, you want to get your kids involved in it and you want to get them excited about it. And my daughter absolutely has the bug. And so, like, when, when you don't have time to go and clean with the boys and you're worried about the transportation rules and all that, so you bring the birds home with you and then you clean them at home, um, <clears throat> I will clean them on my tailgate or set up a plastic folding table and my, my wife will just send send the kid out and she will hold every single bird that I clean after it's cleaned, not before it's cleaned. So she's getting blood all over her clothes. She's like, Kaka, Kaka, is d- Dada is duck? Is duck? Is goose? Is is a goose? It is just the, it is so incredible to like watch this all come full circle because I remember being so young. My first memory as a person is a year and a half years old and like being carried out to the blind. And they Shitting set waiters, <clears throat> and they set me in the swamp, and I lost a boot in the swamp. So they had to carry me the rest of the day. And I talked to my dad about it. And he was like, "You remember that? You were that was like 1994, and I was born in '93. Yeah, and that was literally my first memory ever. And so just like poking the the eyes out of the ducks after they killed them in the blind, and like I'm I'm a one two-year-old, three-year-old, and I'm just like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you know, and so to be able to experience that with my daughter, it's gotten full circle now. It's just She's like, this just is fucked up as you. This is so cool, man. So that's like my newest hunt, yeah. uh, hunt ritual, <clears throat> you know, just be like, look at this mallard. You see the green on it. You see the, you see the blue, you see the gray, like teach her the colors. You have to show her that in the belly though, huh? <laughs> 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 we don't talk about the belly, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because the belly's full of blood now because it's opened up. That's true. But she'll just grab it by the neck and just hug it and squeeze it. And she's like, oh, you're getting blood on your <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's incredible. That's cool. I love that one. Yep. All right, Carter, 3-3. Three, three. This one's going to be a little niche. But if you have a camera guy with you looking at, if you have a banger hunt, looking at the pictures and videos after the hunt. Ooh. If you've got a good that one with lit. awesome footage and that awesome pictures, it's always fun to go back. You remember, talk about each flock after you ran them out, and yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Why didn't you get that? Yeah. <laughs> get yelled at a bunch. It's not, <laughs> not as fun being the filmer, but. <laughs> yeah. That is that is huge, dude. That That has been, like, one of the coolest things about Midwest Flyways is being able to film and, like, hold the memories on the cloud essentially mm-hmm. on YouTube, whatever. And just like have these clips for whatever, like that, that TikTok I made fun of where it's like, Oh, you know, I could save money, but I want my kids to say that my dad and his friends were killers. It's just like, it's on YouTube, dude, go look it up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so cool. That is cool. That's actually your best one that you've done. So far. By far. Great. I know you said that was like generic, but that was your best one. So yeah. Good job. Way to reel it in at the end there. Thanks. Uh, I'm more of a late round pick guy. Yeah. This one is probably, this one won't resonate with everybody in the room, um, but it's for me, uh, cleaning everything that you had come out with you and a shower. So cleaning yourself and cleaning your stuff up, but like, bro, a great hunt and then breakfast and then a shower. Shower's big. The shower's big, dude. You feel like once you've had a good hunt and you've eaten some French toast, just hitting that shower, you're just ready for the rest of the day. You're ready for a golf nap, ready for whatever, dude. Hmm. Shower. I, I shower after every hunt, no matter what. Unless we don't have the ability to do that. I'm with you on the shower. Unless there's no hot water. Joey doesn't shower. That's why he smells. But <clears throat> I'm with you there. I know. I knew the cleaning thing wouldn't hit for him very yeah. hard, but. No, it doesn't hit at all, actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Okay. I'm not clean. Last one. <laughs> a little fucked up, but yeah. You'd think right. I'd have a lot more acne if I... But... <coughs> it's fine. Yeah. You know? It's, it's all good. It's all on your back. <laughs> True. A little bit on my chest right now. Yeah. It's kind of uncomfortable, but... Um, I think it's stress-related. Eczema. Eczema. <laughs> glorious, glorious. I got eczema. Eggs. What's that from? <laughs> yeah, eczema. I don't know, some shitty talk. All right. dog. Yep. Go ahead. Vine, I think. Um, no, when you're, uh, let's just say you're out of state, 
you're you're out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. And you're you like go back to some place, you just clean the birds or whatever. You're all still in your hunting gear and you're drinking a beer or whatever. And you just like talk about all their pictures on the walls, their uh their mounts, you talk about today's hunt. You just like relive the hunt with your buddies, kinda like what Carter said, except without film. And then you go in and talking about their past and whatever. I've been very fortunate to hunt with a lot of people that are a lot older than me. And so being able to talk about their experiences, what has and hasn't worked, um, the swapping bands, they, hunting stories, swapping hunting stories after the hunt. Like you guys, <clears throat> maybe you guys didn't meet before the hunt. And then you mm-hmm. go back to that guy's house and you're just like, tell me, yeah. you know? And they're just like, Whew. Whereas before they were kind of reserved and whatever, but now that you guys have killed the limit together, you killed a couple of ducks, you had a bunch of laughs, like, that is just huge. Yep. I love hearing, there's something about waterfowl in specific where hearing other people's stories and shit is just, I love it, man. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things about the podcast is you can just, like, really drag that out of people and just, like, hear something that... They wouldn't tell their brother-in-law or their wife or their kids, you know, like you have to like ask them about it. I love you know, that. I love that part about waterfowl. That's a great one. Yep. One of my favorite things too. But I'm gay. Hell yeah. True. For sure. True. True. <coughs> Unreal. All right. Well, we should wrap this up. Poll will be on Instagram for who won. Who won the draft. Mm-hmm. And the great debate. And guys, seriously, do not forget to leave us a review here. Mm-hmm. For how much you love Camayon, right. for how much you love the podcast, don't forget to subscribe to the Midwest Flyways Podcast YouTube channel. And watch on, the Snow Goose Hunt. Watch the Snow Ooh. Goose Hunt on YouTube. Lit. It was so good. Carter filmed and edited it. Edited it. Edited it. And you did such a good job, Kurt. Thank you. Clark. 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 Canner. Clark. Canner. Great job. Thank you so much. This is Greg. I've been with you, and I'm very grateful to have been with you. We have Barry and Canner, so unbelievable. That is your new name, by the way. You're going to be Barry. 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 Unreal. Uh, and subscribe to the Know Us Follies podcast channel on YouTube. You can watch all the full videos. Or don't. Whatever you want to do, man. We're not going to change your mind. So, Cal, one more thing. Yeah. 